Good evening, and welcome to this meeting of the Norfolk Select Board. It is Tuesday, December 10th at approximately 7 p.m. My name is Kevin Calcutt. I'm joined by my fellow board members, Chris Weeder and Cece Van Tyne. We're also joined by our town administrator, Blythe Robinson, and our executive assistant, Julie Flizzardi. As a reminder, this meeting is being audio and video recorded, consistent with the open meeting laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. It will be rebroadcasted to NCTV's government cable channel, as well as uploaded to NCTV's YouTube channel. With that, Blythe, would you mind taking us through our agenda this evening? Sure. After public comment, we have several action items, and those include considering the appointment of Barry Lervier as our Interim Director of Public Works, and to consider the approval of a number of licenses that our office issues at this time of year, liquor licenses, common victualler, entertainment, class one, two, and three auto dealers, and taxi licenses, and they're listed in the agenda. And uh, following that, to consider allowing uh, some of the restaurants that have liquor licenses to extend their hours for New Year's Eve um, this year till 2 a.m. And finally, to consider a determination under the state ethics law regarding Mr. Kaliza of the Zoning Board of Appeals, um, a disclosure that he made to the board last year. For discussion items, we have um, discussion with Betsy Pine about the Time Traveler's Dinner uh, for the Norfolk 150th anniversary. Um, we will be passing over the discussion about the anniversary parade. The uh, Mr. Terrio was not able to come at another commitment tonight. He'll come next week. We would like to discuss the submission of a letter to the MBTA regarding the impacts of the rail service in Norfolk due to system changes, a number of warrants to be, be approved, and a number of sets of units to be approved. Very good, thank you. All right, our first item this evening is our public comment period. Uh, as per usual, we will invite anybody who is here joining us this evening to come up and speak with the board for about three minutes uh, with the understanding that the board cannot dialogue back and forth, but more uh, to bring concerns, comments, issues in front of the board for future follow-up if it's required. So with that, is anybody interested in joining us this evening? Mr. Denver, go right ahead, sir. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks. Um, Paul Denver from 16 Winterbury. I've been with you folks before. Um, thanks for uh, holding the meeting and, uh, and inviting people to make comments. Uh, I have two comments. I, I understand from previous communications uh, with you, from Ed Had that, uh, that you're working on, on organizing a building committee uh, with respect to uh, the ongoing projects we have in town. And I would just urge you to move as expeditiously as you can in doing that and try to get a, a, a balanced uh, uh, committee that has uh, accountants, engineers, attorneys, uh, as well as uh, people who have a general interest in the subject. I think it's vital that the town have confidence in the building committee as we go forward, particularly after the police uh, station fiasco. Uh, and, I, and I don't know whether you can do that before you fully have resolved the problems that were created uh, that, or, or, or that led to the, the police station problems. Uh, but in any event, I urge you to do it well before we have town meeting, before uh, we have the, the town has to address the uh, construction. Mm -hmm. The second item is I sent you folks an email a couple of months ago about a communication I had with an HVAC contractor who informed me that his company would no longer do any work in Norfolk and that many HVAC companies had decided the same thing because of the great difficulty of doing work in this town, uh, allegedly because of fairly arbitrary behavior and part of the building department. And I'll leave it at that. I understand you may be, there may be personnel issues. Um, I, and he told me that the HVAC Association had become involved and had communicated with the town regarding this issue. My interest is not in pursuing any one individual. My interest is in making sure that contractors feel as if they are going to get a fair shake in town. And I want to, would like to know, and I don't know whether you can tell me now or tell me at a different time, that uh, the HVAC problem has been resolved and the, the association uh, that representing them is happy with what's happened or a reasonable compromise has been reached. Uh, I don't think the people of this town should be in a position where a number of contractors 
do not want to work in the town. Obviously, it, it's not good for the town in general, and it costs money for consumers when the uh, the market is uh, is slimmed down by the, the fact that other pe people who can do the work are not in the market. So uh, I hope you can uh, ad address those problems and uh, and uh, move forward. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, sir. Do we have anybody else for public comment here this evening? Mr. Rosenberg. Um, good evening. Um, three, I hope, fast things. One is I was going to uh, request that the board um, consider adopting uh, sections of the, the provisions of the open meeting law that permit remote participation. That would be um, CMR 29.10. Uh, the wife spoke to me a few minutes before the meeting started, and she said that it is likely that that will, in fact, be on the agenda for a future meeting. So um, thank you for that. Um, second thing is um, I've spoken in the past about wanting increased citizen participation in town government, and I'd like to again request that that be an active project in the future. And the last thing is I just wanted to call to the attention of the board and um, the uh, staff of the town that there is a project that, um, being conducted jointly by the Bloomberg Foundation, the Harvard Business School, and the Harvard Law School um, for um, uh, city leadership. There's a website that's cityleadership.harvard.edu. Um, I think formally joining that project may be more of a commitment than Norfolk can make, but even uh, assuming Norfolk does not join the project, there are cases online from other municipalities that have joined it, and one can read what they've, the problems they've encountered, how they've dealt with them, and I think that the education is potentially useful, even if Norfolk can't afford to, to be one of the cities participating. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> Do we have anybody else for public commentary this evening? I'm seeing none. All right, <coughs> on to our next agenda item. Please consider appointing Barry. I am so sorry. I'm just going to say Barry, okay? Right. <laughs> As interim director of public works. Thank you. So, um, with the upcoming retirement of Bob Gee next a week from Friday. Um, we started into the process earlier this fall to uh, seek his replacement and through recruitment. Um, while we had a good first round of interviews, uh, for various reasons, some of the candidates decided not to continue their following through the process. And uh, I'm not at a point where I'm ready to say that without being able to have a full, thoughtful process that we're ready to make a permanent appointment. So, discussed with Barry, who's our assistant director, who's been with us since July of 18, so a year and a half, um, and he is interested in stepping into the role uh, on, on interim basis, uh, gives us a chance to work together um, on various issues in public works. I think that would be helpful for both of us. Uh, while, and we have restarted the recruitment process again. So I don't have a timeline for you. Uh, probably will be several months by the time we go through gathering resumes, interviews, and, and so on. Um, there is a pay increase. It's um, more than, Ms. than Barry's making right now, less than the current director is making. Um, but we're, we're both satisfied it's a fair amount uh, while we go through this process. So that's my request. Thank you. Chris, CC, questions, comments? How do you pronounce your last name so that I don't massacre uh, it? Uh, La Riviere. La Riviere. All right, so like La Riviere Beach, but without the go. uh. Okay, good. I just need to think of something. To, all right, yep. so, so I'll be the person to pronounce it. <laughs> That's it, that was my only question. <laughs> That's an easy one. Like, is it appropriate for us to ask what the increase was for him to take uh, during the period he takes over as director? Sure, it's uh, about 15,000, if I recall. Yes. Fifteen. Mm -hmm. That's per year, but okay. on an annual basis. Right. But you know, right. it's only annual for a few act. months. Yes. Right. Uh, no questions. 
All right, with that, I would move that the board ratify the town administrator's recommendation to appoint Barry LaRiviere as interim director of public works. Seconded. Nicely done, by the way. Further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Congratulations, yeah. Barry. Thank, Thank you. you guys. Look, look forward to working with you. Hopefully, it's not going to be the snow Mageddon type winter that people are talking about. It's a bold time to step into those shoes. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. We're all good. <laughs> All right, our next item this evening is to please consider approval of the following licenses expiring at the end of the year. Liquor, Common Victualler, Entertainment, Class 1, 2, and 3 Auto Dealers, and Taxi. I put you to Victualler. Thank you. Seems to have a lot of people defrauding <laughs> Common Victuallers. So a major responsibility of the Board of Selectmen in any community uh, every year, this time of year, is to renew all these various licenses for the, the coming calendar year. And so, um, based on some advice from town council, uh, we've listed every single business um, on our agenda. Um, I guess the town of Adams got in trouble with the AG's office for not doing so, so it looks a little different than maybe from past years. And behind the agenda in your packet is a spreadsheet that Nancy's put together, because she's taken the lead on this, which shows you, um, it's in section four, shows you uh, for each type of license, liquor, or common deck, and so on, what the requirements are, the categories, and where we stand. Um, for example, with liquor licenses, uh, they need to make application, provide us a liquor liability policy, uh, insurance, they need to have a inspection for by the fire department, and they need to be considered in good standing both by the treasurer for the payment of taxes and by the building department if their business is required to have what's called a 110 inspection. Um, you will notice that on all of these, the column for fire inspection is in red. Um, that's only because they, they're in the process of doing those right now. And uh, I met with the new fire chief and the, uh, and the deputy chief this morning and the building official. They have made all of these inspections already at this point and we are confident that these businesses will not have any trouble meeting the requirements so what we're requesting of you tonight is to approve each type of license on a conditional basis the condition being that as long as by december 31st they have complied with all the rules we will issue their license if they don't we will not and they will have to reapply the only business that we are still um, having to work through um, is Silva's Coffee House um, to get the application filed and follow up on some paperwork. But otherwise, um, we're in very good shape at this point in the year. So by you signing the licenses, we'll hold on to them and then we'll um, let all the businesses know they've been conditionally approved. They can come in, pay for their license, and pick it up between tomorrow and the end of the year. Very good, thank you. Um, questions, comments? What happens if um, something happens between now and the 30th where the, it, the condition would be, it would be revoked because they hadn't met a condition precedent, but they've left with their... They're not leaving event. without having met them all. So, the, so you said they could pick it up tomorrow, but they're not... If they have done everything, oh, they can okay. pick it up tomorrow. All right. If they haven't, they wouldn't be able to... So they don't pick it up until they've met all the conditions. Exactly. Right. I was then imagining that you're running There's around... There's a lot of conversations saying, going back and <laughs> forth between <laughs> Nancy, building department... Yeah, I get that. ...fire right. department. Um, and the, the downside for the business, if they didn't say it's a, a business that sells, you know, it's a restaurant, they wouldn't right. be they able to, to open, right. and they'd have to reapply. So... Um, most of these businesses have been in business, you know, a number of years. They know their routine. Um, it's more of the departments getting around and getting all the inspections done. Now, my question was just more when you were saying they could pick them up as early as tomorrow. I thought you meant all of them. No, only if they're... And so then I'm like, well, how do you get it back? Yep. So. I will, Mr. Chairman, I will recuse myself from the um, motion for the Class 1, Class 2, Class 2 auto dealer license as I am one of the applicants. Very well, and that is the only one, correct? Correct. Very good. All right, further discussion? Anybody? No. All right. We scripted uh, several motions. Pretty good. Hold on, I get back to my. Okay. Yeah. 
my motion script. All right. Want me in? Go for it. All right. So I move that the board approve and execute all liquor license renewals for 2020, subject to the receipt of all required documentation, inspections, and payment fees. Second. There's second for the discussion. Hearing no. none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 I move that the board approve and execute all common victual or license renewals for 2020, subject to the receipt of all required documentation, inspections, and payment of fees. Second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 I move that the board approve and execute all entertainment license renewals for 2020, subject to the receipt of all required documentation, inspections, and payment of fees. Second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 I move that the board waive the Class 3 hearing for Norfolk Auto Repair. Second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 I move that the board approve and execute all Class 1, Class 2, and Class three. 3 auto dealer license renewals for 2020, subject to the receipt of all required documentation, inspections, and payment of fees. Second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Abstained. And I finally move that the board approve and execute all taxi license renewals for 2020, subject to the receipt of all required documentation, inspections, and payment of fees. Second. Further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Well done. All right, our next item this evening is to please consider allowing liquor licensed restaurants to extend the hours on New Year's Eve until 2 a.m. Yes, so uh, these. Um, businesses can currently stay open until 1 a.m., but given that New Year's Eve is typically a, a, a eve of a holiday where people like to stay out a little bit later and enjoy, you know, company of friends and whatever um, at restaurants, um, the town has typically uh, granted approval to the Eagle Brook Saloon, the Horse and Carriage, and Nevados to stay open until 2 a.m. Uh, this year, New Year's Eve falls on a Tuesday night. So um, we're recommending that the board, as it's done in the past, approve those. Do they request this, or do we just offer it? Um, I'll have to check back with Nancy tomorrow, but I think it's, um, I think we usually reach out to them and say, hey, do you, do you want to do this again? And I think the answer is yes, but I need to double check with More them. curious than anything else. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it, the thing at the top, I understand it's more specific in the motion but it talks about allowing liquor license restaurants but there are four liquor license restaurants in the list only three in the motion my understanding is it's those are the only three that that want it that want it um you know we can i can i'll double check with nancy tomorrow if there's anybody else we do have another meeting next week okay. and we could take care of it so i will do that tomorrow chris any questions no, no questions what was it? All right, with that, I move that the board approve an extension of hours until 2 a.m. on January 1st, 2020 for the service of alcohol for the Eagle Brook Saloon, Horse and Carriage, and Nevada's Restaurants. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Next item tonight is to please consider a determination under GL Chapter 268A, Subsection 19 of Mr. Caliza's disclosure as a member of the Zoning Board of Appeals. So approximately a year ago, um, Mr. Caliza submitted to the town clerk's office the uh, form uh, that's covered for 268A, Section 19, regarding um, the Lakeland, Bar Lakeland Farms um, subdivision project and that because his uh, his spouse is a realtor and was going to be representing the owner, he was recusing himself from that process uh, on, on the ZBA. He took almost all the steps to, do, to uh, file that correctly. The step that was missed was bringing it to the appointing authority for the ZBA, which in our case is the Board of Selectmen. Um, we had a question from a different resident about his disclosures. When I uh, went down to talk with the town clerk, she showed me the form. I said, well, we're missing this one section. Uh, Mr. Cleza then decided to pick it up from the town clerk, bring it upstairs, and get it over the finish line, so to speak, by asking the board to approve it. So it's a little bit late in the process, but he wanted to wrap it up correctly. 
So that's why it's on your agenda tonight. I think the project's essentially done, so it really doesn't have an effect, but... Well, the project's not done. Well, it would, it would have an effect because the project is not completed, so right. if there was anything, if there was a modification to the special True. permit, or the, the comprehensive permit before right. the Zoning Board of right. Appeals, Mr. Kalisa would not participate. Yep. And I think that's what he's referring yep. to. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So is this just prospective? I mean, you're not... It usually no is. pro tunk retroactive back to the beginning saying I'd have to check with the state I mean generally these things are hopefully done prospectively and well, I, that's what it looks like that he that but he, it's written there was no conflict of interest yeah. well he didn't you know as opposed to there will be none well, going forward yeah, well, that well, what I think Chris has said I think it got confusing because really the project was the comprehensive permit was approved for uh, Mr. O'Hart mm-hmm which at which time there was no realtor identified, which Mr. Kaliza participated in that. Once the project was sold, after we had issued the comprehensive permit, Mr. Kaliza's wife was appointed the realtor of record. So during the comprehensive permit, Mr. Kaliza's wife had nothing to do with this property. It was only post comprehensive permit that she did. So I think Mr. Kaliza was taking the the move <coughs> to make sure that the uh, we, we approved or that there was no conflict of interest going forward if there was any modifications to that comprehensive permit. Okay, those are so, details I, I wasn't aware of. Yeah. So I guess what I'm asking, I guess there's no, I am asking a couple questions. So you're saying that if we vote in favor of this, we're saying that there was no, con that we know that there was no conflict of interest at the time Mr. Kaliza had not yet recused himself because it was at the Mr. Ohart portion of the process. But this is essentially saying we're saying there was no conflict of interest for him to vote when he voted. This came in about mid December last yeah. year. So I don't know the timing the of the project. The comprehensive permit was already approved by then. So I think this is post comprehensive. That's permit. what I'm that's what yeah. I'm just trying to get at yeah. is it's this not is clear to me that this, this is, is ready for me to vote on because yeah. this is written that there was no conflict, yeah. but I don't know yeah. what happened before December of 2018, and then it, does this mean, to Chris's point, if this is just saying retroactively there was no conflict, does that mean I would say, not I would say from that point forward that when his wife became the right. real director. But it's not written that way, so you're going to need to change the motion to say there was no conflict sure. and there will be, well, because I get that he's going to continue to recuse himself. Yes. And that mean, But I feel like if he's trying to dot I's and cross T's, yep. So we would reword it to say there was no conflict of interest from the point of issuance of the comprehensive permit? No, because we would still be speaking retroactively. There, would, there was no conflict of interest for when the points where he recused himself? Or if he recused, like, I don't know. It just seems maybe there was no conflict, I understand conflict he, of interest he with his involvement in the Lakeland Farms 40B project from the point of... His filing the his form fi and and filing the form, or when it was the project was sold. I mean, I think maybe putting in that detail that draws the timeline. They need to put in dates. So this form was accepted on December twenty fourth, twenty eighteen. So anything from December twenty fourth, twenty eighteen thereafter. Mm hmm. Right. Does that make sense to you, yeah. Chris? Yep. Yeah. Because uh, I don't think we can vote on something that predates the form. No. Okay. Do we have any further discussion? No. No. All right. In that case, I would move that the board vote to determine that there was no conflict of interest from December 24th, 2018 with regard to Mr. Kaliza's involvement in the Lakeland Farms 40B project, given his disclosure that he recused himself from the process. And we'll continue, and, and we'll continue to do so. And we'll continue to do so through the end of the project, correct. Second. Second, do I hear further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Good to have that tied up. All right.
Our next item this evening is to please discuss the plans for the Norfolk 150th Anniversary Time Traveler's Dinner on May 9th, 2020. Welcome, Betsy. How are you? Good evening. So I wanted to be here tonight just to announce to you three and to the public that this event is going to take place because when the funds were awarded at the town meeting, there was no mention of any party. And so I just want to make sure that you all approve that that's what we're going to do. And I wanted to tell you what I've done so far. I have a committee put together of about 10 people in addition to myself. We're going to take care of lots of different things. Um, and we're going to celebrate on Saturday, May 9th at the King Philip Middle School starting at 5 o'clock. I'm just going to read right from here so I don't forget anything. Um, time travelers are distinguished citizens from Norfolk history who have made the journey to wish Norfolk a happy birthday. Um, some of the time travelers are descendants and or admirers who are playing a role of the distinguished person that they admire. Um, I don't have details about what the tickets are going to cost. Um, there is one change from, I think, what you have written in your packet, and that is I'm going to limit tickets to 250 people because it seems like a huge number, even at 250. The um, room could accommodate 300, but the caterer that I'm talking about, talking to, suggested limiting to 250, and then he will cook for 300 and only bill me for 250. But that's the way we control number of people and how hungry they are. Mm -hmm. I expect in the next week or two to have a website just for the party. Uh, Jim Lehan is my treasurer and he's going to have a bank account, a website. People are going to be able to buy tickets online using PayPal. And I figure there are many people who might not know how to use PayPal or want to use PayPal, so they're going to, we'll also have them available at the town clerk's office. Um, I wanted to have the tickets to be really inexpensive when I started out, but I've decided that they're going to be a little bit more money so that we can have a really nice dinner. I don't think we should economize so that we have a $20 ticket and not very good food. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was my decision. So I just want to make sure that you all agree with what I'm doing so that I'm not just out there with nobody knowing and then people start maybe being unhappy with what's going on. Any big decisions that I make, I'll run by my committee and have a vote so it's not just me out there. And let's see, for further information on tickets and the party, check the town webpage. We're going to be we're going to have a link on the town webpage that will bring you over to the um, Historical Commission's webpage and then that will have a little description of the party cost of the tickets, when you want to buy a ticket, or when the tickets go on sale, there'll be a button to pay on PayPal. So we thank goodness for PayPal. That will really help <laughs> us. Um, haven't decided exactly when tickets are going to go on sale, but we, we have put together a mailing list of all former selectmen who are vertical and you know reachable, In some who are from far away. We're going to send them invitations very pretty picture on the cover. Oh, there it is. Um, oh, I like that. We're going to have an art show of all the Horace Hamlin paintings, and that's a Horace Hamlin painting. Um, Roy Hamlin is going to be one of the time travelers, and he's going to come as Horace Hamlin. And Mr. Chris Weeder is going to be a time traveler. I have to get to the <laughs> does Chris know this? Yes, he does. <laughs> so if you could pass this to him. This is a biographical sketch. Don't tell them. Oh. oh, is it going to be like a surprise? It's yeah. a surprise. Oh, we have a lot of surprises. I haven't decided if I'm going to publicize all the names of all the time travelers, but I've got about a dozen of them, and it's going to be very fun and very exciting. And anybody who wants to be a time traveler can come. If you want to come as your Aunt Nell, who was active in the centennial, go for it. Um, it doesn't have to be someone who wants to speak. Um, but I'm trying to arrange it so that the 12 time travelers that I'm working with are going to speak, and they're going to say what their activities were in Norfolk and why they're here and why they wanted to wish Norfolk a happy birthday. So we're going to have a nice dinner. We're going to have a big cake and no alcohol. We're going to have art. We're going to have music from the King Philip Chamber uh, music groups. So we're very excited, and we're getting underway. And I think by... Um, March, I should be selling tickets. 
but I'm going to get all the people who are on the, the mailing list, the VIPs, are going to have a chance to buy first. Because we didn't want to have someone like Frank Gross or uh, not be able to get their mm -hmm. ticket because we sold out. Right. So, but doesn't 250 sound like pretty sounds substantial like a nice number? Manageable. Yeah, it sounds big. It sounds huge to me. <laughs> it's a little scary. Does the venue, uh, not that I'm the hardest core drinker in the world, does the venue not allow for alcohol? I know. I was That's thinking, what I'm, I'm, I was thinking it would be nice to have a glass of wine. Right, just to you know, sort of prolong the night and interact. Celebrate. Later. Happy birthday. Right. But if we do, it's going to have to be sparkling cider or something because there's no alcohol allowed at the school. Right. So in many ways, it makes it easier because less complicated with no alcohol. So that's a biography of the individual that you're interested in. It says he drank before he went. <laughs> <laughs> he had it. So he had it. So I, I have to stay enrolled. Get it on, so I will, um, his I'll make sure I with him wherever do what he I have went. To do. <laughs> All right, so I need my invitation back. That's my only copy. But that's a picture of Norfolk Town Hill around 1975. Yeah. And when we make the invitations, they're going to be smaller because this is kind of big for an invitation. Mm -hmm. And we're going to ask people, do you want us to save you a seat? Or are you not coming? You know, there's going to be an RSVP card. So that's it. The, I, was, I was awarded, or the town budgeted $2,250 for the, for the party, which is a little scary because it's not very much money. But that's going to take care of all the administrative things like paying for the kitchen help, the custodian, the invitations, the postage, all that stuff. I think also might have to pay a policeman, I'm not sure. Um, and then the tickets, my goal is that the tickets cover the food only. So that's the plan. So I wanted everybody in Norfolk to know that this is coming, May 9th, save the date. And also I wanted your approval that this is what you guys think is a good idea. I mean, seems pretty cool. Yeah, speaking as an individual, not a representative of the board, not only does it sound like a, a fantastic event, but thank you so much for doing all this work to put it together. I know it's been a long time coming. You've been working on it for a while now, you and the committee. Yeah, we started thinking about it before Maytown meeting. Yeah. And I was scratching my head over it all, all summer, talking to Chris and other people. And um, it's amazing. So many people, when I tell them about it, they say, oh, I want to come and I want to be... Miss Day, or I want to be Agnes Bristol, or the, there's a lot of colorful, wonderful people in Norfolk history. So, <laughs> hope to get Miss Day here. Mm -hmm. It's not booked yet. So that's it. Beautiful. Well, again, thank you so much. You're welcome. Betsy, is there any? My only concern is, depending on the price of tickets, mm -hmm. is there going to be some seniors? Oh, that's a good point. Who are going to? Who obviously on fixed budgets, mm -hmm. it makes it difficult for them. Well, so are we going to? Are we going to? That's what I was thinking and that's of. A, that's the only thing I'm wondering. Should we make some small provision for, and it's hard, but for seniors who... It's hard to who, draw the line because it, yeah, guess we, what? Yeah. Everybody that participated in the Centennial is now quite so, senior. Yes. And anybody that participated in the Centennial who's vertical really wants to be there. Yes. So I can't... Just say you have a senior discount, maybe, or some kind of discount senior. for them. What senior? Well, Eighty-five, the, right? Exactly. Ninety. Well, we have to. But, uh, I, and, well, I've, I've been thinking about this for months. Yeah. And at one point, I was saying anybody that had to fly in should get a free ticket, or any time traveler should get a free ticket. But a lot of time travelers are wealthy, and they can very well pay for their meal. So it's it's something that's still mulling over. Mulling over. Um, and it's hard to draw the line. Right, that makes sense. I mean, if you've got a function where you know a small handful of people may be sort of in that in-need category, you could probably come up with a way of sort of pooling resources to comp some tickets. But where your sweet spot for a guest is that category, if everybody's comped, then you've just paid you know, out of pocket from the library or from that rather from the yeah, uh, and I'm historical commission scared of going over two hundred and fifty you know, in the middle of the night. I mean, maybe, maybe there's someone out there who money. really would like to be there. I who, bet who we know has needed. is on a as needed. So there I think there's something we have to look at on an individual who, basis. Who were very active in the Centennial, who are yeah. not wealthy. Yeah. And I'm thinking that that's an intersection that I would want cross. to set aside. Anybody that plays music from the band, from the KP band, is gonna get a free dinner. I can't charge them for playing. I gotta pay them and give them a free dinner. 
So depending on how many of them show up. But if I feel myself running out of money, I will come and visit you. So you I talk don't to have, Chris. So yeah. I don't, I'll pay for my ticket. <laughs> oh, Even thank though you. I'm going to be a time yeah, traveler. Thank you very much. I don't want to be hauled off to jail, you know. But uh, <laughs> think I'll be drinking before this. It doesn't matter. <laughs> right. no. But this this is something that um, we can. I'm Chris's bride. It doesn't go drive it again. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Betsy. Thank you. All right. Uh, since we will not be talking parade this evening, our next item is to please consider the submission of a letter to the MBTA regarding impacts to commuter rail service in Norfolk due to system changes. So since I kind of did this one, I'll give a little bit of background. Um, over the course of the last uh, eight weeks or so, I've been getting some feedback from Norfolk commuters identifying the uh, increased frequency and delays and cancellations in some cases of some of the uh, Franklin Line commuter trains. Um, I myself uh, typically commute into Boston as well and I've experienced some of these delays, sometimes both on my inbound and outbound trips uh, into the city. Uh, I decided to do a little bit of research. Um, apparently we're not the only ones feeling these impacts. Uh, they're being raised by residents uh, all across the Franklin line, but mainly it seems to be in Walpole, Franklin, and Norfolk. Um, as such, reached out to some of our state representatives who gave me some more background on um, the situation related to the beginning of a Foxborough pilot program to identify uh, another train that would go out to Foxborough that would be working off of the same line as Franklin. Um, a lot of this kind of aligns with a timing standpoint to the beginning of that pilot program. So with that, uh, I did see that there were some responses put out there, both from Keolis and from the MBTA, identifying that there had been an action team developed and that they were addressing these issues. But, you know, while you assume that there is going to be some level of adjustment with any new process, uh, these have been reoccurring with no real end in sight. And the response from the action team that I saw online was centered around issues related to leaves on the tracks and train control safety systems and conflicts with other trains on the lines. And it just didn't seem like we were getting to what the apparent core of the issue was. So with that, I drafted a letter uh, that I would like the board to consider sending as a municipality to the general manager of the MBTA, simply identifying that we've been hearing a lot of this feedback, we've been seeing it firsthand, we understand that there's been some motions made, but we'd like to see something a little more tangible in terms of uh, the response and how we're going to track to ensure that the efforts that are being put forth are effective. Um, so I did draft a letter uh, that's in the packet. Um, I don't know if anybody had the opportunity to breeze through them, but I would welcome any inputs or considerations. Do you have a second page? There was no second page. Okay. Second page. Yeah. I always like a reply, a, t a date for reply. Mm -hmm. I think the only thing this just doesn't have is, well, you know, please point. get back to us by. Or give us some kind of Look forward response to hearing from by. you by. Yeah. So I noticed that. I anticipated timely response by XG before I lose my marbles. <laughs> Otherwise, I found it to be positive and correct. We want to know what's going on. Yeah, I would. Um, I would echo what you said. I also commute on the commuter rail, and um, I also have the uh, background of. Uh, Sean, my husband, he's the state representative for our community, was one of the people who was, part of the pun, railing against the new line. <laughs> You're welcome. You guys can all use that one at your leisure. Um, when they were first suggesting it, and oh, it, it was going to be so, it, it, it's been a bad idea from the get-go, but um, he got no traction because the government wanted to um, do Mr. Kraft a solid at the taxpayer's uh, expense and so in it went um, and you're right almost I think to the day not even to the day we lost a bunch of, of lines that a bunch of people including a bunch of people with kids at Severian relied on to get their kids to and from school and people relied on to get their kids from other places to and from school and also to and from work but notwithstanding the fact that we lost trains that we're not going to get back we the ridership on the ones that stayed tank like just they were delays and delays and delays and I think it was to your point or a couple other people mentioned it well 
as well, there would be these delays and they, would, they were all attributed to medical emergencies. And in the 10 years that I've been riding the commuter rail multiple times a week, I've maybe had two or three medical emergencies, and yeah. then people are getting two a day. Right. And I think that they're just attributing delays as a result of the Foxborough line to medical emergencies because they know people are less inclined to complain when they think that it's a, a fellow citizen who's um, had an issue. So I think that it absolutely tracks the first day of the Foxborough line is when um, our situation derailed. Okay, that's oh all right, now I'll stop, I'll stop. <laughs> uh, so, uh, that one just came to me, I'm just so, so proud of that one. And <laughs> so, um, I think that this letter is a great first step. I don't know what else we can do. Yeah. Um, you know, frankly, before the train even came in, when all of these issues and the, and the townspeople and Walpole who were in minutes, you know, were impacted, it, it all fell on deaf ears, but I'm hopeful that maybe now, with all of the other issues that the, um, the tr all of their other sort of things that they've insisted on doing um, it, are falling apart, maybe they'll be a little more receptive to um, the average non-billionaire citizen who has issues. So I like how this is written. Just I agree that it's a, it's a bigger issue than than people realize. There are thousands of people being impacted by this decision every day. Uh, we do keep referencing the letter. Does it make sense to read it or just have it available online? I just think. have it available online. Right. Yeah. Okay. We can put it on the website and say we've submitted this to the state Perfect. in response. You know, uh, Mr. Rosenberg. Um, so the letter starts out by saying you're writing on behalf of um, Norfolk, Walpole, and Franklin. Was the intention to get uh, people from uh, Walpole and Franklin to sign the letter also? It absolutely was. Um, okay. I did reach out to representatives from both of those towns, and they have both since declined um, being included on the letter. They declined to sign. But, I did. But you're still going to... Still going to send it from Norfolk. You got it. Well, I'm sorry, and you're still going to leave the line that says, on behalf of... Uh, I will be leaving the line that says, we are writing today on behalf of the 13,000 Norfolk residents. Uh, oh. We will be removing the Walpole and Franklin. I see. Uh, good try. I'm sorry they declined. Did they say why they declined? Um, they did. Um, Walpole um, obviously is still not feeling great about how things shook out after their long battle with um, that pilot program. Um, I think that they're kind of spent on you know, fighting with the MBTA, so I think that they declined just because they've already gone down this road and they didn't feel like they really wanted to do too much else uh, to battle with MBTA. Franklin, on the other hand, identified that they had not heard many complaints from their residents, uh, which was curious, seeing as how there will be a I was just going to say, isn't there some sort of a meeting? In Franklin, held by like, their state representative. So, and who is very responsive to his citizenry, and if they didn't have an issue, he would not be holding a, I mean, he's a great guy, I like him, he's not going to just randomly hold a meeting right. for um, his citizens if they have not indicated that there is a problem. Right. So, so is this just a particular individual who is speaking on behalf of the town? At first, we reached out to uh, the chair of the select board of each of the towns or of the uh, town council. Um, we didn't hear back from either of them, so then we moved it to the town administrator mm -hmm. or town manager from each town, and those are the two who responded. Those are two. And I get, I can get fatigue on the part of Walpole, but um, <clears throat> when is the meeting in Franklin? And the only reason I'm asking is because a letter written on behalf of 13,000 Norfolkians is great, but if you had an additional 32,000 Franklonians, I don't know what they're called, but they, um, I will th see the that might resonate, and if their meeting is soon, maybe we say, hey, we've done this letter, it's all ready to roll, what do you guys Right? I mean, I don't know. I don't mean to co-opt your letter. I just think that it, no, it has exactly more the intent. strength with numbers. So yep. I'm headed to a MEC meeting tomorrow morning, which I'll see the Franklin Town Administrator. So let me take another run at it with him. And that meeting is on the 17th, CC. So yeah. I'll talk to Jamie tomorrow and ask him to re rethink it. 
I mean, because I don't see any downside. I, I guess I can I see fatigue and thinking, well, what good is it going to do? I mean, they did a lot. They had signs and bumper stickers, and I still have shows. signs yeah. and bumper stickers in my garage. Um, and it was incredibly frustrating for them. But I think where's the harm I, in, in trying again? You're going to make the administration angry? What are they going to do? Screw up our rail travel? They've already done it. Yeah. Like, what, Bob Kraft's going to get mad that I'm, you know, yeah. I, I don't think he cares about me. So, um, I don't know. It would be worth maybe add, taking another stab at getting some more help. Okay. But I do like the letter. So, we'll hold off on sending the letter until after the meeting on the 17th? Or tomorrow if you can get them. Yeah, there. I'll, I'll talk to him tomorrow and see where we're at. Let okay. you know. Very good. Any other questions, comments, concerns related to an MBTA service letter? Other towns? Nope. All right. So you need to move on it? It's got a little motion. It does have a motion? It does. Look at here. Move that the board approve the submission of the letter to the MBTA. All right. I would move that the board approve the submission of the letter to the MBTA. Nicely done. <laughs> Seconded. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much. That's what I'm here for. All right, we have some warrants to go through. Looks like you're up first, Chris. Okay. Please consider approval of the following warrants. 11-19-2019 in the amount of $2,492,288.39 and 11-19-2019 in the amount of $1,000. Chris, I'm, I'm going to... You're going to kill me. I'm going to channel my inner Chris Weeder and ask, shouldn't you be moving? Shouldn't I be? Saying that you move that the board approve. You said, please consider. I didn't say approval. No, you said, oh. are, are, I'm sorry. Move the board, right? Please make consider approval no. make of a the motion. following warrants. Make a motion. You going to make a motion? I'd like to make a motion there you go. to move that the board approve <laughs> the following warrants. <laughs> On 11-19-2019, the amount of $2,492,288.39. <laughs> on 11-19-2019, the amount of $1,000. Okay. Second. Yeah, that's, he made up that sign. Yeah. Yeah. Any further discussion? All right. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 So I'll move. Second. Further discussion? No. All those in favor say aye. 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 I move that the board approve the following warrant. 11-26-2019 in the amount of $721,930.43. Yeah, I messed that up pretty bad. Second. We got it. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor say aye. 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 I move. <laughs> so well done. That the board approve the following warrants. 12-3-2019, the amount of $46,837.30, and on 12-3-2019, the amount of $62,203.65. Seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Not our cleanest warrant period, but we finished aye. strong. Thank you, Chris and CC. The last item is to please consider approval of some meeting minutes this evening. All right. So I had, I've had the benefit of um, reviewing these both on my little phone and then finally getting to look at them in hard copy as well. And so I moved that the board approve the minutes of April 30th, 2018, which I will acknowledge predated my existence. So I was basically just looking for typos. <laughs> May 15th, 2018, also have nothing to add because um, I was not present. September 4th, 2018, December 6th, 2018. April 30th, 2019, so I under, at September 10th, I'm going to have to clean this up, let me stop. Uh, I move that the board approve the minutes of April 30th, 2018, May 15th, 2018, September 4th, 2018, December 6th, 2018, April 30th, 2019, September 10th, 2019, and November 5th, 2019, regular meetings. Second. So for discussion purposes, I just want to be clear that I've read April 30th, 2018, May 15th, 2018, September 4th, 2018, December 6th, 2018. Um, but I wasn't there. 
So if uh, they look good to me, but I can't say for certain that there was anything that happened, but I have no reason to doubt. So, um, right, I don't think anybody who's taking contemporaneous notes is adding thing in, things in that did not happen. Uh, so these are all notes that I approved, correct? Yes. Oh. But I also just looked at them. But. So these are generally meetings where the board posted um, to be, um, make sure that they were covered in case there was discussion and, and generally there was meetings about right. providing information to people or having a listening session. Right. Correct. So I felt that we needed to have minutes of all those meetings even though they're very short saying there were no deliberations, there were no votes taken. Right. You know, he's, here's, because if you look for the agenda and you find no minutes, I for one wonder why, why are there minutes there. So we're going through a, a, a cleanup phase here, if you will, to just make sure that we got all our eyes and and they were the ones that you had also looked at, but they, they sent them all, so I look at them too. So I'm, gotcha. like, I'm just saying that if I'm reading it, the ones that I've experienced, I have a different layer of, of knowledge, but they looked fine to me. And you also did. Yeah. And Donna, did you have something on that? Um, April 30th, uh, 2018, it says Town Council, comma, J. Talaman. Does that imply he was our Town Council? No. And I believe he was our town um, moderator. Correct. Because it's followed by a town administrator, comma, Jack Hathaway. So at first I read that and said, well, town council was at the meeting? I but I took it to mean that it was so. town council and um, Jay, Tallerman. Jay Tallerman because he's not town council. Because there's the comma in between. Well, it should always be. So that's not having be... been there, it's hard to say. Right. That's why I wasn't. That's got to be the pre-town meeting uh, warrant review. Right. So it'll be town moderator, not town council. So, do you remember anything I, differently? Uh, so I think I was there, and I don't remember the town council being there. And it would seem to me surprising that uh, the town would pay the town council to be present for that. Um, but I can't well, the town, council, town was, council was there he's, last. He's one. always at the town. He's always there at the pre-meeting. At usually. Yeah. At, I'm sorry, so when we are talking about pre-meeting, we're talking about um, an opportunity for citizens to come and ask questions about the warrant? No, 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 uh, I'm talking about the, the, the moderator's meeting. The moderator's meeting, or I was thinking we were talking about the meeting like right before oh. town meeting, right? Like remember the one that we had, we had town meeting and yeah. before it with the select and the meet. Oh, okay, the so I guess we can check around. the date of this and see right. whether the date is the so same maybe date as the town meeting. we have to remove it. The town meeting's in May, and this okay, was in so April, April at 3rd. the so library. So this is at the library. So I doubt, to your point, then, I doubt You're that. probably was, correct. But does it make sense for me then to change the motion and remove that one, and we can figure it out for reals? And I didn't go back and watch the video. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Why don't we withdraw that one, right. and we'll double check. All right. So Thank I'll you. move again. Thank you, Donna. Good for it. Ready? I move that the board approve the minutes of May 15th, 2018, September 4th, 2018, December 6th, 2018, April 30th, 2019, September 10th, 2019, and November 5th, 2019, regular meetings. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, that does it for our agenda this evening. Blythe, anything else to add tonight? No, there isn't. Very good. Anything from anybody in the audience this evening? Hearing nothing. Chris? Nope. Cece? Just looking for that motion to adjourn. All right. Well, very quickly, um, I am going to be going into surgery on Friday, so there is a really good chance I'm not going to be here for our meeting next week, which would mean that I'm not going to see everybody until next year. So I did want to quickly say thank you very much, everybody, for your efforts. Cece, Chris, Blythe, Judith, thank you all very much for everything this year. Uh, it's been a fantastic year from my perspective. Um, I don't know if I'll be staying that same story come Friday. You're going to have nothing but, but attainment on board. You were, <laughs> Friday's the day where it's going to be right. all, all magical. But I did want to Saturday say thank magic. you to everybody, and uh, also happy holidays to everybody as well. So with that, I move to adjourn. Do I hear a second? Second. Further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you.